guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make a double chest. We have a single chest right here and then we can add another chest next to it which will um, basically allow us to place uh, different chests and stuff like that. We can also merge the chest together if we put it on the same uh, rotation which will use half of the block to basically store the items. It works a little bit differently because it has to be different uh, to work with M Creator but uh, it's not too much different if we open it up. You can see that it puts the blue items in the top slot. If we go ahead and break it, uh, we can go ahead and put uh, it on the other side and it'll put it in the, the same top slot. It just is the way that it needs to be because of how um, chests actually work. I'm pretty sure that they're hard-coded, so there's a little bit of mechanics behind um, how they are. But um, when you break a chest uh, aside, it will go ahead and drop the relative side that I was able to set up. So basically the mechanics is pretty simple. I'm like, if we break that and then you would have the other block in there. So hopefully that makes sense. It also doesn't connect. It's very similar to uh, how other chests work. So you have all the different rotations and stuff like that. Uh, I won't be going too much through the code, but uh, basically there are a single chest workspace. You can get the workspace on the uh, GitHub and explore it at yourself. See how everything is set up. It's not too complicated. So basically there's this 20, 27 slot inventory and we just want to make sure that uh, the items are going to drop if it's not bound and uh, pretty much all the basic stuff for regular inventory. Uh, then we have the chest itself. So we have the texture, we have the rotation, and the model set up. So the model should be facing north in block bench. And then we have three different models, the chest, chest left, and chest right. So those are your different ones. We want it to be water loggable as well. So And then once you've done that, you can just click this button and it will automatically generate all the... Uh, needed shapes so you can basically set all the properties here there isn't anything really too important to actually set up uh, for the single chest um, the tick rate you don't really need a tick rate for this uh, we're using nearest neighbor so uh, you do want to make sure that the block is uh, going to be blocked when pitched in movement so it doesn't drop the items and you want mbt data in uh, with inventory so you can basically go ahead and set up the inventory for the slots the slots need to be 27 and 64 and then you can enable or disable these if you want uh fluid and the energy we don't have anything the only thing that we do have is this one procedure for the nearest neighbor so when a block updates next to the block we have the three different uh local variables up here which are passed over to uh, basically a block state. So what we can do is we can specify our blocks that we need. And then there's these uh, run or call procedures. Those are important for getting the uh, size uh, or moving the slots over to the um, right, uh, the next inventory. There's four of them in total, so you'll have to set those up. I'll cover the script in just a second. For the most part, the only things that you need to do is link up the procedures and uh, the call blocks and then basically specify your three different models for the procedure itself, like for the blocks at the top of the script. Everything else is automatic. Um, then there's nothing for generation. So the move script is basically this. This is... Um, set up so there is 27 slots it starts at zero and then it goes ahead and does a whole bunch of funky stuff in order to move it over we have uh, number variables for those and the 27 slots are for the repeater that's going to run 27 times for each one and we're just basically moving items and then removing it from the existing inventory when we um, basically do that. So basically it's going to put it in the top slot. That's basically how that one works. It does it for every rotation as well. So as you can see here, it just basically gets the rotation of the block and then it basically passes it over to the call um, thing when it, but it needs to be in, in the specific order. So don't like move around the blocks because the block needs to be placed before the items are moved. That's really important. So if we look at the other one you would see the order that it needs to be placed in so that was basically a single chest and then we have the double chest we have the GUI um, with the GUI itself uh, when you're in 
the 3D mode, um, or not 3D, like in game, it doesn't actually go to the top of the screen. It just looks that way in Amp Crater for the GUI editor. It will be normal, like how it should be when it's like set up that way. There's a total of like 54 slots or something like that. I can't remember. And then you'll need your left uh, model and your right model for your blocks. Uh, you can generate the thing. And the only thing that you should really actually set up is basically pointing the uh, right click and drop to your single chest. So when the block is broken, it should drop your single chest. And just make sure that it's dr like dropping that. Other than that, all the settings are basically the exact same. Again, uh, make sure that it's blocked and entities see it as a blocked block so they don't walk through it. And this time you're going to need for your left chest 54 slots and 64. You're going to need to select your uh, double inventory for your double chest. And you can enable everything else. It just needs to be 54 and 64 for those values. Forge Energy, it doesn't need anything, and there's no actual procedure running for the left chest here. So as you can see, it just basically is set up that way, and no generation properties. Once you've done that, uh, you can go over to the right chest, and the right chest again, uh, you just need to set your model, and then all the rotation stuff, it's basically same properties as we had in the single one, generate your model uh, textures, and then what we need to do is basically just set up these uh, point to the single chest again for the drop. I uh, forgot to do that, but uh, basically that's what you need to do. And everything else is basically the same. You don't have a tick rate and the same properties. You can set fire or whatever you want, but um, basically you don't need MBT for this one. So because everything's running on the left side, you don't need to worry about that. And the triggers, there's no triggers for this particular one either. So generation, nothing. And that allows us to move on to the uh, double chest. Uh, I believe this is the this is the right click. Our a block is broken. We need a global trigger for this, and then we need to set our actual properties for the three chests: the single, the right, and left. And then once we gone and done that, what we need to finally do is we need to. I think that's everything that actually needs to be done. Basically what this particular procedure does is that when the chest is broken, it's going to make sure that uh, because it runs before the uh, block is actually broken, it's going to go ahead and move the items over to the next chest. So depending on the order of the, um, the side that it's on, it's going to move it over to the uh, respective block uh, to either the left side or the right side. Uh, but it will be a single chest. So that's basically what it's doing is it's updating the block to be a single chest and then it's going to go ahead and uh, move the items over to that slot and then drop the rest that are in the side that it's designed for. I might improve this particular project a little bit more, but I wanted to get it out. Um, like the there's a few things that I want to like try to improve, but that's basically the breaking properties. And that just leaves one more procedure, and that's the player right-click on the block. And again, we need the to specify the blocks uh, for the right, left, and single. And then we can go ahead and just open up the inventory. What we're doing is we're canceling the event, and then we're opening up the inventories based on the coordinates of that. So with the right chest, what we're doing is we're passing the uh, inventory to open onto the block that is on the right side or the left side of the right block. So basically it moves the target location over to a different block to open it up. So that's basically how this works. It's just opening up a different inventory for a block somewhere else. So that's basically it. Uh, there's pretty straightforward when it comes down to it. We're just making sure that the script is there and it's just pointing, testing if the block is there and then basically setting it up. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I think that's everything that we needed to cover. So uh, again, the workspace will be in the description. You can, well, the projects, all the files, the textures, assets, everything will be in the zip file on the GitHub repository. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thanks for watching. Peace out.